Contact management is an important part of any business. I'm going to show you how to track contacts in Airtable and build your own custom CRM. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our, our website, innerdevsolutions.com, or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. Depending on the type of business that you operate, there's going to be a lot of different ways to set this up. In this tutorial, I'm just going to show you a general sense of how to set up a contact management solution or a custom CRM. But again, it is really important to think about how you operate, what types of information you need or collections of information, meaning there's contacts. These are individual people. Then if you're a B2B business, chances are they work for a company. Yes, you communicate with the individual person but they work for an other company or client or something like that. So you'd want to track those two pieces of information separately and link them together. I'm going to show you how to do that within this tutorial. The other piece of that, once you have your clients or companies and then your contacts, and you might also have interactions or meetings or discussions, something along those lines. And these are all types or collections of information that you are going to want to track and tie into one another. That being said, if you're a consumer facing business, then you might only have a contacts table and interactions. They don't necessarily work for a company or you don't care so much about the company that they work for. You'll just have your contacts and your list of individuals and your interactions. So you really need to sit down and think about, write out all the different types of information you need to track for your contacts, how everything relates. That's a very important piece of all of this. So often when we have these tutorial videos that we're watching, we just jump in and start building based off of the tutorial that I'm showing you or many others are showing you. However, the problem with that is we're just trying to give you a general sense of what can be done and how to get started. But at the end of the day, it's really important to build these things out in a way that's going to fit your business. Taking that into consideration, I'm going to show you how to go through some of those steps that we go through when we're building out solutions for clients. So let's just take a general business, for example, this is going to be a B2B and these factors will apply to many businesses that are B2B facing. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is create a company or clients table. So go ahead, open up your Airtable base, create from scratch, make sure you label your base and we will create or rename the first table and we can just call this clients which is going to be your clients or your companies that you work with it could also be accounts whatever works for you from here i'm going to duplicate this table and i will call this one contacts so these are going to be the individual people that we work with and one more table that i'm going to create is interacts and again this is a crm or contact management solution base that is pretty simplified. This is going to be the most basic type of solution that you're probably going to use. Chances are you're going to want to build on so what I was saying earlier is that you need to really understand your processes when it comes to your contact management. And I will get into that a little bit later on here, but to get started, we definitely want to track our clients. We want to track the contacts or the people that work for those clients and our interactions. So we'll flip back here to our clients. And there's a few additional data points that we're going to want to add. So the first thing, we'll just change this to client name or customer name, company name, whatever you want. Our primary identifier here, primary key is just going to be client name. A few other pieces of information we might want is the industry that they're in. And we'll make this a single select field and I'll just enter tech for now. You can add all the different categories that might apply to your particular business. We'll add size. And this can also be a number field or a single select. I'm just going to do ranges here, add anything that applies to you in your business in that drop. Something else that might be important is the address. I'm just going to go location to keep it general. And that's going to be a single line tag. For example, it could be Toronto, Ontario or Toronto, Canada or New York, New York or San Francisco, California, whatever. Those are the types of information. I'm going to track in this location field. Again, you could set up an address field or something like that. something else I'm going to add is another single select, and this is just going to be status. Depending on your business, this could vary. I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to have 
active, I'm going to have lead and our default option is going to be lead. So every time I add a new client, it's going to automatically default the status to lead. And I will just flip this one to inactive. So that's clients that we no longer want. So that's a pretty good start. Something else I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and add contacts as a linked record field, and we will allow linking to multiple records or contacts in this case. So we can see here, if I click into this, it's going to give me a list and it will give me a list of the contacts that live here, their employees or the contacts that are related to this specific company. I'll go into contacts. There's some information that we need here. I'm going to do full name. So this will be a single select field. We can bring in an email field. We can bring in a phone number field. We could do whatever their title is. And if we want, we could also bring in a status at the contact level as well. So it's going to be single select. We'll go active and active. And this will give us some reference. If someone leaves a company or no longer applies to that customer or client, we can just switch them to inact. So now we've got our clients that they link to. And one other thing is I want to change this contact ID here. We can do contact ID. I'm going to make it a formula field and the formula is going to be a concatenate function. I'm going to bring in the contact full name. I'm going to separate it with a dash and I'm going to bring in the client as well. So the way this will display is it will just show first name or sorry, full name and then dash and then the client or company that they work for. I'm just going to quickly add a whole bunch of example data and then we will get back into it. So I've got my list of clients, companies, and I have a list of the different contacts as well that relate back to those clients. So if I go into here, I can see that I could add another contact to this company and it will show me the list that I have available here that actually exists within the contacts team. One other thing in this case, what I want to do is I'm going to turn off this allow linking to multiple records, but basically I do not want this contact to link to an additional client as well. Any given time, they're only going to work for one company. I'll go ahead, save that. And then that way I can't accidentally add additional companies or clients to that individual contact. So this is a good way to see your data, see who works for what company and to be able to track their contact information. That's a great start, but we want to add to this now. So something that we've done, we've got this interactions table and we're going to add to it. So the first thing I want to do, I want to actually link to the contact in this case, and it doesn't really matter here. We can allow linking to multiple records. Let's say if we want to track meetings and we maybe meet with two of the contacts from a specific company or client, then maybe we'll want to add that directly within the base. But in this case, I'm just going to toggle this off. Any interaction that I have is only going to be with one contact from the clients at a time. Something else I may want to track is the date. That's the date of the interaction. These interactions could be things like phone calls, specific meetings, Zoom calls, emails, anything that you really want to track. If you were interested in tracking the emails across your CRM or contact management solution, I would automate that. There's a lot of different tools out there. Relay.app, Make, Zapier, among many other tools that are available to be able to link those. So when an email comes into your inbox, it will automatically look for this contact in your base and add to that interaction for you. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to log these types of information manually. I'll just add this as a date. We can change the format here if we want. By default, I'll just have it go to the current date or today's date, and we can change that if it's incorrect for whatever reason. A couple of other things. I'm just going to do a long text here. Add notes. So that's any information related to that interaction or contact. And then something else I'm going to add is the type. So this can be a single select and it's going to be initial contact, meeting, deal, could be any number of things related to the type of interaction that we just had. And the last thing I want to do here is go into the name. We're going to label this interaction ID, and this will be a formula field as well. 
Again, we're going to use a concatenate function. I'm going to bring in the contact, separate it with a dash. I'm going to use this date time format, and I'm going to bring in the date. I actually hit a comma here, and then there's different formatting. So you can format it by bringing in the month, the day, and the year if you want. But there's some shortcut codes. I'm just going to put in double L, and that's going to format it in the way that I want. I'm just going to separate this with another dash to bring in the type of contact that was or type of interaction that it is. I'll go in here, hit save, and you can see now when I go in to add a new interaction, I'll just select this first person here. It's brought in the date for today's date automatically for me. I can add additional notes that apply to that interaction and I can maybe do this was an initial contact, maybe my first outreach and I'm trying to make a sale or something. And you can see here that it's brought in the company or sorry, the contact name along with the company based off of the contact information here. It's bringing in the date and formatting it accordingly. And then it's also brought in the type of the initial contact. So this is a contact management solution or base or CRM in its most simplest form. There's a lot of additional ways to add to it, to make it more useful for your company, adding automation and those types of things. And as I mentioned, it's really important to think about the types of information you want to collect and what your ultimate goal is, so what problem you're trying to solve, what your current process looks like, and then what your dream process or dream scenario or outcome would look like. So taking those things into consideration, I'm going to give you an example here. I have my contact management solution built out, but something that takes me a lot of time is, let's say I create a lot of different contracts in any given day or week. I've got my clients and contacts here, but now when a deal gets closed, I jump into my templated Word document or templated Google Doc or wherever you store your contracts. And then you just plug in the information already exists within your contact management solution into this document and then send it off. And that's fairly time consuming, especially when you already have this information available to you. That's something to think through. Your dream scenario now is automating or automating a high percentage of that process. Let's say, for example, you want to take the information from your contact management solution and add it to this contract. And now 80 to 90% of that contract will already be complete for you. So now you've identified what you need to do. You'd have to map out your process. And what that could look like is adding an additional table to the solution, labeling it contracts or deals, something along those lines, and thinking through each step. You'd want to put together your templated document so that it fits the automation structure, meaning that you're going to track most or all of the information that needs to exist on that contract within a table called contracts. And then on a specific trigger, when the deal is closed, it's going to automate and pass all of that information using a tool like Relay or May or some of the automations that are built into Airtable. Once you've identified that, you could go in, start building this, label it contracts, we can delete all of this information. We could maybe bring in status and we'll do new and maybe we'll just do closed for simplicity. But once you've got that in there, then you might want to bring in closed date. That would probably need to exist on a contract and maybe the amount, what the contract is actually worth and anything else that needs to be brought in. Again, as I showed you, you can link to multiple tables within an actual base. In this case, we'd probably want to link to a client, maybe a client and a contact, something along those lines. And then from here, we could set up our make scenario or using whatever automation tool you prefer to pass this information to the placeholders within our Google Doc or our Word document. But again, it's really important. I can't stress this enough that you need to really understand your processes and what your actual goal and outcome is before you start building your final solution or your final base. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tutorials in the future.